morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. And as we are praying for Syria, don't forget that the capital of Syria is Damascus. And you know about the Damascus Road. Apostle Paul met Jesus on the Damascus Road. Let's pray that Syrians will also meet Jesus once again in this war-torn nation. Let's continue to pray for them. And so it's our happy privilege to be in the house of the Lord once more. And the Lord is so good. It's beyond our vocabulary. Our hearts are simply overwhelmed to see the faithfulness of God in all the different areas of our lives. But at the same time, dear brothers and sisters, we are faced with a real enemy. We are faced with a foe that hates us with a passion. And in these days, he has let loose many spirits to cause us harm and danger. And so this morning, I want to talk to you on how to overcome witchcraft that attacks your mind and your body. Amen. How to overcome this spirit of witchcraft, which I believe has been let loose in these days against your mind. And I'm sure if we had a time of testimony, we'll all testify to the fact that we are attacked in our minds all the time. And so this is a spirit that's been let loose. Solomon, the wisest man in the world in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 said, To everything there's a season. But I want you to know that this is the season of tremendous demonic manifestation. More than we've ever experienced before. 2,000 years ago, it was there. 2,000 before that, it was there. Can you imagine today the intensity of this warfare? And so in this season, when witchcraft activity is getting heavier, demonic imaginations target minds and the infirmities inflicts the bodies, we are seeing a greater intensification of these spirits and powers in our day. And you should not be surprised. Paul had this situation in his church, as we know it, in uh, Galatia. And so he speaks to the Galatians in chapter 3, verse 1, and he says very clearly to them that witchcraft has brought real problems to them. And so he says, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? He's talking about witchcraft there. And so, folks, Satan has greatly intensified, I believe, his final onslaught against the people of God. Everywhere I go, I see people getting hit with these things. Sickness and diseases are on the rise. Even though we have the, the greatest doctors and medications, it's not solving the medical problems. Mental problems and psychological problems are on the increase. Even though we have more monies, even though we have more comforts, but we have more problems. Demonic oppression is on the increase. So what do we do? This morning, I'm sounding the alarm so that you can rise up and battle against already what is here and what is intensifying against you and coming up against you. We need to come up against these spirits in the name of Jesus and in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you already know, 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And so we don't look over the fence and blame the neighbor. We don't go to work and think somebody is jealous of us there and they are doing something. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the powers of darkness. This is a spiritual battle against a spiritual foe. And we must bow to our Lord and bow to His Lordship in our lives and all the resources that He has made available to all of us who love Him and, to, and those who serve Him. Now we're going to look at these situations in a few moments, but what I'm going to share with you is what the enemy has unleashed in this last days, since this is his strategy. His assignment, according to John chapter 10 and verse 10, is to steal, kill, and destroy. And so that is his main talent. That is his mission. All he wants to do is to steal from you. All he wants to do is to kill, bring destruction and death. And he wants to destroy. That what he is hell bent on doing. Please don't blame God for that. God will not give and take away. I don't care who sings that God gives and God takes away. And I don't care what Job had to say about God giving and taking away. It is not true. God does not give and take away. He will not bless you and then curse you. He is God of all blessings. A good father will not curse his own children. It's the devil's assignment. Jesus said in that very same verse, chapter 10 and verse 10 of John, I am come. Do you see the Job description of Jesus, I am come that they might have life, not just ordinary life, but life more abundantly. Amen. So he wants you to live the abundant life. But what do we see today? What do we experience today? What are the signs that we witness as we look around? There is what I call Mary worship seems to be on the increase. Now, this Mary worship takes many forms and many shapes. Mary worship. Now, I'm just not talking about Catholics. They started it. Think about that. Mary worship seems to empower the Queen of Heaven also known as Jezebel. You know there's no legal queen in heaven. We only have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no queen in heaven. So if you want to be queen, be queen here because there's no queen in heaven. What you see in the natural is also true in the spiritual. The queen is ruling the world right now. Britain's Queen Elizabeth II is the longest reigning monarch in the world. And she does not seem to be giving up anytime soon. <laughs> it tells us something. You've got to think very deeply about this. What about all these pageants? Where there's always a queen. Do you know that there's a spirit let loose at these pageants? Did you know that there's a spirit, a worldly spirit, a lustful spirit? <coughs> the beauty queen finally becomes the wife of about a half a dozen different men because they, time, they each time drop her. 
She sees her beauty as a means to sell products. Finally, she loses her soul. It's the ploy of the devil to thrust this queenhood forward. And so we have a smiling, scantily dressed young lady as the winner. The media then pushes her forward, puts her to the top with dire consequences. This is the spirit of Jezebel and it's very much alive even in the church. I say that Jezebel is dim. She is dominating, she is intimidating and she is manipulating. That is why she is dim. She doesn't know it. She is dominating, intimidating, and manipulating. That's how she gets to the top. That's how she gets people under her control. When Mary is lifted up to a place where only Jesus belongs, it unleashes demonic activity in that particular territory. And so all the demonic activity thereafter takes place there. Didn't you notice that we have these temple aunties operating all over the place? They have such power. And people go to them. Here in our neighborhood, we have these sangomas. It's always the women. And did you know that 99% of demon possession is amongst women? something there that we must take note of this morning. And so as this demonic activity increases, people report feelings of oppression, feelings of fatigue, and there's a strong warfare against the mind that makes you feel like quitting. And you might also experience, experience physical manifestations for which doctors can't find the answer. Please, please pay close attention to all that I'm saying to you this morning. And if sleep is going to overcome you, know that it is a demonic manifestation. <laughs> so I'd rather you even stand and don't lose the message. Don't let the enemy rob you this morning. Many vile spirits are being let loose. And you are familiar with most of them. So I'm not going to talk about them. We spoke about them many, many times. But what I want to really disclose to you this morning is something that we've never, never talked about. In fact, it's a taboo subject, even in the church. We don't talk about it. We only sit in a place of judgment and we judge people who do this. I'm talking about suicide. I call it a growing scourge of the 21st century. And this spirit has been let loose to such a degree that it has overtaken AIDS and many other sicknesses put together there are far more deaths to suicide today. The papers don't say much about it. They don't talk about the subject. <coughs> because most times the families are so embarrassed, they don't want anybody to know about it. I wish I had the understanding of suicide better years back and I could have helped so many people. What is it that really drives a person to take his or her life? In the past we've been just too quick to judge these people and consign them all to hell. So easily we consign everybody to hell. I realize now that it, that is not our mission and that is not our mandate. 
to consign anybody to hell. We are not judges. We have not been given that portfolio of judging people. And so I made a concerted effort to research this scourge. And what I've learned, I want to share with you. And I pray that you in turn might be better able to help others who might know of someone who might be on the verge of doing the unthinkable. It is my hope and prayer that this message will help prevent this tragedy from occurring in your life or in the home of someone that you know of. Tragically, folks, suicide is on the increase all over the world and very much so in the Western world where they have everything. And you wonder, why should people do it when they don't lack anything? And so what we've discovered, it's not worldly goods that can satisfy us. We can have everything that money can buy, but that will not bring satisfaction. What we truly need is Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus can help us in times like this. And the shocking statistics are that suicide among young people is increasing at an alarming rate. Suicide is a tragedy and it's getting worse. In South Africa, I looked at the figures and it's getting alarmingly shocking. Let me share a couple of facts with you from here in our nation. An increasing number of children, some as young as six years old, are either attempting or committing suicide in South Africa. This is just one of the shock findings from a research into South African suicide trends. At least one suicide is committed every hour in South Africa. And 20 more unsuccessful attempts are made in the same, in the same time span. Suicide has risen 48% in the last 10 years. Speaking to the Mercury newspaper on World Suicide Prevention Day, Professor Chivos, that some of us might be familiar with, from the head of behavioral medicine at the Nelson Mandela School of Medicine said, we are seeing more and more people attempt or commit suicide. At the moment, the average age is 36, but we are beginning to see children as young as 10 successfully commit suicide. Suicide is visibly increasing. Children often believe that death is the answer. We find that most of the children overdose themselves on medication. We often miss depression in young people. And parents should be alert to any change to their normal behavior. Because children and young people convert stress into physical signs like tummy aches and all of those things that go with it. Children need to be taught, said the professor, 